Okay, let's let's start the the class. Okay, for for everyone, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The period between the OT and the NT is called the intertestamental period. In in history, it is normally called the Dark Ages, the 400 years of silence. They called it 400 years of silence because during those years, seemingly, God is so silent. There is no prophet. There is no prophet. Just right after the restoration of the Babylonian, uh, restoration of the, 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 the temple, and they were all established again, back to Israel, back to the, to, to the promised land, God seemingly keeps silent. But they just call it years of silence, 400 years of silence, but it doesn't mean that God is so inactive. God is very much active during those years. There is no prophet, that is the reason why. Because for them, the prophet, the two ministry of the prophet, the prophet is what? For them, the prophet is the mouthpiece of mouthpiece of God. Uh, the prophet, the prophet is the mouthpiece of God. The, in the Old Testament, if God needs to say something to the people of Israel, He will send prophet. So prophet ang ipapadala ni, ipapadala ni God sa kanila, and God will speak to them because during the time of Moses, it's good that wonderfully they can hear the voice of Yahweh, but that is also fearful and terrible. Because every time they hear the voice of Yahweh or Elohim, they what? They experience terrifying moment. If somebody failed to obey, immediately that person will die. So the, the difference between the prophet and the priest, the priest is the what? The mouthpiece of the people to God. So the prophet, if this is God, this is the people. The, the role of the prophet is to speak to the people. And the role of the priest, the people will say something to God. Either way, although the prophet is also doing that during the time of Samuel, but the priest, when, when the people needs to offer something to God, it is the role of the, the priest. But seemingly, for almost 400 years, God sent no prophets for this period. But this is the period of the popular Alexander the Great, in which seemingly God used him to prepare the, the place. Because when, when Alexander the King, or Alexander the Great ruled, he ordered the Hellenization of the kingdom, the empire. And he required the people to speak the same language, and that is Greek. But, be, but at the age of 33, as I have told you, Alexander died very young. The mighty conqueror, the, probably one of the greatest warriors of all time, is Alexander the Great. But he died at the age of 33 because of mosquito, because of malaria. And when he died, four of his generals fought for the kingdom, and the kingdom was divided. And on the other side of the globe, the Roman Empire is preparing. And the king, of course, there are two popular kings among the four divisions of the Jewish, of the Greek people, of the empire of Alexander the Greek. Uh, the one is the Hasmonean and the, the other one, the Seleucus, the Seleucus kingdom. But that is weak compared to the Roman empires who was able to flex the muscle. And when the Roman Empire came, they defeated the Greek Empire. So at least uh, the, the, what the contribution is that 
the, the, the Greek Empire, at least the contribution is the, the language and the preparation. Although, as you all know, this is also the, the 400 years, this, this is 400 years BC. Uh, you all know that this is also the time of the great philosophers in Greece, the, the time of Socrates, uh, Plato, Aristotle, and great mathematicians coming from this place of Greece or the Greek Empire. But basically, politically, this is God's preparation. God is not silent. God did not sleep for 400 years. He remains to be there contributing and preparing the, the, the people of God who actually experience the, the previous uh, punishment from the Babylon. So the, the New Testament uh, came into existence. Okay, we have the... So the, the book of the New Testament. Let's, the book of the New Testament... Twenty-seven. Uh, Twenty-seven books. Uh, why there is New Testament? So the, the whole Bible seemingly is preparing the people for the coming of Christ. The Old Testament is actually looking forward to the coming of Christ. Here we are, we are looking back, backward, going back to the cross. So the, the center of human history is no other than Jesus Christ. The, the years were actually divided because of him. It is before he came, the years were going down. B.C., B.C., B.C. And then going up when he came. So Jesus Christ was considered to be the center of human history. Of course, greatly influenced by Christian perspective. The Chinese, they have their own calendar. They have their own method of reading history. So the New Testament books. The first, five, the first four books are called Gospels. So the first four books are called uh, Gospel. So the books are empty books. Uh, first four books are called Gospels. These are the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first three, these three, these three are called synoptic. Why synoptic gospel? Synonymous synoptics because they presented the life and the ministry of Jesus in almost the same method. They all started with the birth of Jesus. So they are called, the, the Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke are called synoptic gospels because they presented the life, the coming, the works, and the death of Jesus Christ. So seemingly, these three presented the Jesus, the human side of Jesus, that there was a birth, what? The, the actual ministry. Because the gospel of John is so different compared to the three first gospel. Because this one, in, 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 in his presentation of Jesus, there is no birth. Jesus is the eternal, the eternal Son of God. So, Matthew, uh, in, the original, in the original findings, they, we call this the, we found this word, uh, the kata Matthew. Matayon, Matayon. Katamatyon, according to Matthew. Actually, Matayon, oh, Matayon. Sometimes Matayon. Uh, Matayon, Matthew, Matthew. This is the, the first thing that they found 
when they charged it to Matthew, because they found according to. Kata means according to Matthew. They attributed the first gospel to Matthew, the, the known tax collector, the, the, the one of the twelve apostles of Jesus. What are the evidences that the majority of the conservative scholars attributed the first gospel to Matthew? If you read the, if you read the gospel of Matthew, you will notice that it is Matthew who used the word tax, the interest the revenues and then the the savings do not do not treasures these are words coming from someone whose background is actually finance or at least accounting so he was considered to be a tax collector the background of that particular author most likely is someone from accounting world uh, who are the agents Let's go to the let's go to the audience of this first gospel. Okay, Matthew, for example, the author. Matthew, the tax collector. Anyone? You have? Do you have Bible? Do you have Bible? I know your Bible are in your cell phone. Uh, can you read Matthew chapter 10? Matthew 10, 10, 3. You will notice the presentation of the, te, the 12 apostles there. But seemingly, why Matthew? There is a heading there. that Only in his name there is the description. Can you read please? 10, 3, Matthew chapter 10, verse 3. Okay, the tax collector. How come the writer of this particular chapter, he introduced the 12 apostles, and yet, siya, ang inintroduce na yung name niya, nilagyan niya ng description, ano? Matthew, the tax collector. He is known also as Levi, di ba? Oh, if you want to read, normally we read it Levi. But yung iba, Levi. Kung Pilipino ka, Levi, you know. But Levi, uh, the tax collector, Matthew. So Matthew wrote his gospel to the best probability with lots of debates on the recipient of the letter. <laughs> the, the, the recipient is probably Palestinian Jew. Uh, Palestinian Jews who are probably rich people in his mind. In his, in his writing, you will notice that one of the reasons why they are considered rich, look at the rebuke in chapter 6. Do not love money and God. Money or mammon. And then in his uh, in his chapter 6, part of the, the known sermon, he insists that, that do not what? Do not pressure wealth on earth. Do not focus too much your life, what? Investing wealth on earth, but wealth in heaven. In the, in the Sermon of the Mount, He's, he used the word, blessed are the poor. Can you look at that verse? Chapter 5, verse 3. Verse 3, please. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In Luke chapter 6, the author of Luke says, Blessed are the poor. There is no spirit. Blessed are the poor. In, only in Matthew, we found the statement in the words of Matthew, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Why Matthew included the word spirit? Mapalad ang mga aba. 
spiritually, mukhang spiritually, ano? Uh, blessed are those people who consider themselves spiritually poor. Compared to those uh, Palestinian leaders, the, 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 the religious leader of, of his time, the particular leader, Pharisees, who consider themselves as spiritually well. Jesus said to them, blessed are the poor in spirit. So why Matthew used the word spirit? The best probability is that because the recipients are rich people. If you say blessed are the poor, they will be offended. Kaya lang, kaya nilagyan niya ng blessed are the poor in spirit. We call that as literary style. When you say literary style, you need, the author needs to appropriate terminologies that are accepted to the heart and to the mind of the recipient. So that is important. That is what we call literary style of the human author. It was written to Palestinian Jew and probably it was written the, the place of writing. The best suggestion coming from the scholar is Syria. Uh, we all know Syria today is suffering. Ano? Almost half a million people died for the last five years because of the domestic uh, uh, violence, the war that is happening in Syria today. But the author is Matthew. Um, how Jesus was presented. Uh, very, very noticeable in the writings of Matthew. Uh, Matthew presented Jesus as the, the, uh, the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. The, the Christ. Christ. Uh, Jesus is the Christ. Uh, the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Why? It is very clear in his writing that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, insisted by, by Peter. When Peter was asked, Peter, who you do, who, what do you think? The people are talking to me. How, they, how do they call me? Some say that you are uh, a prophet. Some say that you are a teacher. What about you? And Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the Christ. So, that's clear. Do you notice also in chapter 1 that Jesus was presented coming from the Vedic line? Do you notice that? Do, do you read Matthew? <laughs> Three 14 generations. Uh, tatlong 14 na generasyon. Tatlong, tatlong 14 na uh, ano, ano? Uh, uh, napaka solid coming from the Old Testament and he was presented as someone coming from the royal Jesus is from the royal blood the Vedic the Vedic he is from probably in the Old Testament in the Old Testament promise there will be always someone who will reign coming from your family, the Davidic line, the Davidic side. And Jesus was from the line of David. But we should be aware again that the Savior is also contaminated with Gentile blood. Kaya yung pagiging tagapagligtas ni Jesus Christ, hindi purely Hudyo siya. Pagdating doon sa time ni Ruth at saka ni Boaz, nung nag-intercourse si Ruth saka si Boaz, doon galing si Jesse yung nagmix yung Gentile blood at saka Jewish blood doon galing si Jesse at si Jesse ang naglabas kay ang naging tatay ni David so from that we could develop and developmental in the theology that Jesus has also uh, Gentile blood hindi na siya 100% Jew kasi nga magiging savior siya ng buong mundo Kaya dapat meron siyang, may contain siya na uh, Jewish blood at saka Gentile blood. 
Kaya makikita mo yan, pagdating yung mga sa Gospel of John, you will notice uh, in, the, in the narratives of the Gospel of John, there was a time nagpakain si Jesus ng 5,000, 6,000, di ba? And then the, the only sources is the five, five loaves of bread and two fish. And then, how come ang sumobra ay 12 baskets? Mas marami yung sumobra sa source. Di ba? <laughs> two fish, five loaves of bread. When they gathered the leftovers, they gathered 12 baskets full of, that is symbolical, the 12 baskets there are symbol of the multitude, symbol of the Gentiles. That there will be people of God coming from the Gentile people. And we belong to the Gentile, non-Jew. Non-Jewis tayo. Lahat Gentile na yan. And isa siguro sa dahilan yung kung ba't nagkaganon si Hitler na pinagpapatay niya yung Semitic dahil anti-Semitic siya, you know? yung Hujo. Dahil so special in the, in the eyes of God, the Jewish community.